Hey brothers and sisters, this is your boy BC back at you with another based LDS presentation. Uh, thank you for dropping in. Thank you for listening to this one. And, uh, you know, I want to start off my day today by just what a wonderful day it was today. Um, great day at church. Um, just a tremendous day. And this day got kicked off a little bit later because you get home, you're making dinner, you know, I've had the missionaries over. And then there's the Christmas devotional. And then I had a uh, Zoom meeting for, I guess I've been tabbed to be the FSY representative for our branch. Yay, more youth. Um, and it's kind of funny because this is something like FSY is something that really doesn't impact me. Like uh, the two boys that I have that are active, one's going on this mission right after high school and the other one's 12 currently, not old enough to attend. So I'm basically taking all the information, giving it to my wife, who's the young women's president. So I guess I'm just a go-between. I am my wife's unofficial secretary. Uh, she, she, we'll see if she finds that amusing, I don't know. Um, but I think I want to start off today it's the Christmas season, and that means festivities and parties and get-togethers. And one of my favorites about this season is the Christmas movies. And when I say that, I am most definitely not referring to the Hallmark movies, because, oh, yuck. It just, oh, syrup, American syrup on a screen, just not good. And there's no Christmas about them anyway. Maybe there will be a Santa Claus involved, who knows, but it's all just boy meets girl at the holidays and hijink shenanigans and love ensue. And that's just, <laughs> my wife likes that, my father likes that, I, that's not my cup of tea. Um, but there are two movies that I want to bring up because I think they're especially important for, for us. And they both have the same kind of theme. Um, one of them's been out for a little while. I believe it's LDS produced. It is called The Miracle Maker. Um, it is on Prime. That's where I have it now. I did purchase it a couple years ago, so I can go there whenever I want and watch it. Um, but it is a fantastic movie. Uh, it takes place, I would guess, in the Midwest in the 1800s. And this whole town is down on its luck. People are not working, not a lot going for anybody. And they get word of a miracle maker coming to town. And the whole town turns out with banners and a band and, you know, well, not a band, they're not that large, but for this carriage to come through thinking a miracle maker is going to be on it. And, and the guy's just, a, some dude is like, okay, yeah, this is not my stop. Let's keep going. And the carriage was on, the people are deflated. And then this old, this guy walks up, kind of plainly dressed, you know, not shabby, not nice, but just plainly dressed. Says, hey, I need a place to stay. I'm going to be here for a while. And he just goes about doing good things to people, for people. Um, you know, repairing a fence, doing this, doing that, and encouraging people to go out and do do that too. Um, and it is just, it is a fantastic movie that gives a positive message on hard work and faith producing miracles. I'm not going to get into the whole details of the movie. Watch it. It is a fantastic movie. I cannot recommend this highly enough. Um, it is a, just a fantastic movie. It's the miracle maker. Um, it's fun, it's lighthearted, it's a little cheesy at times, but it's just, it's a fun movie. And my daughter loves it. So that's, that's, there you go. Ten years old, loves it. She's, we, we, she'll watch it as often as she can. And then the second movie, it's very closely related. And in some ways I think it's a much better movie. Um, and it's one we just found a couple days ago and watched. And it is The Christmas Candle. And it is set um, late 18, early 1900s when in, in England. 
in kind of a countryside town, you know, quaint, charming, not in, a, not in London, not in any of the cities. It's its own little village. And a preacher is called to lead the local congregation there. And he arrives and finds out that this town has a tradition where they believe that the candle maker will hang all the people will write down their wishes, what they're praying for. And the candle maker will collect these and somehow make them make this wish a part of the candle. And every 25 years, they'll have these out. The populace knows it's happening to every 25 years. And an angel appears and chooses one candle to bless. And um, then the candle maker sees the angel, identifies the candle, saves it, knows who's it, who it belongs to, gives it to them. And when that person prays, what they pray for will come true. And the preacher's offended by this. He's a young man, he's, but he's offended by this. He's like, you know, miracles come from God. You don't, why don't you rely on God and not these, you know, false manifestations and signs. And he does a lot to actually sort of undermine the faith of the people, but he tries to do it in a positive manner by going house to house and helping people and preaching messages every Sunday about helping your neighbor. And the whole town starts to come out and help people. And they start doing these projects so that the preacher goes home to home and he's like, what are you praying for? And the people are like, oh, I need a wall. I need a husband. I need a knitting companion. All these various things. And so he works with them. And where he can, other people just show up and get involved on their own. And so miracles, people start making their own miracles by how they work. But they do show because of that exercise of faith, right? Faith precedes the miracle. Because of that exercise of faith, there are things that happen that are strictly because of providence, divine intervention, miracles. And this film has some nice surprises. It has some nice twists, and it is just a beautiful film. I think a little bit better than Candle than a Miracle Maker. So that is a Candle at Christmas, um, and we watched that on Amazon. It was free. Fantastic movie, fantastic. But as I watched these, it put me in the mind to to wondering why people say that we don't see miracles today. Because I do see miracles. And I do think it's the perspective you have on life and how the world is working. Um, you know, I like Christian Homestead. I don't watch all their videos. But he did a video recently. Um, and I guess he has this thing where he has people send them the miracles they see happening in their lives. And he just happened to share like five or six of the letters he'd received. And the things that people were seeing that were miracles. And, you know, I have not seen anyone raised from the dead. I have seen people healed. Um, miraculously. Um, and, and, and it's not like their arm is broken and it's, it's the bones jutting through and the hands laid and the bone goes back in. It's not like that. But I have seen... I have seen hands laid on a person that was otherwise in a coma and on the edge of death. A blessing pronounced and within the hour they're revived. Now... They were revived for a short term, a few months, but it was enough to set their house in order and have everyone get set and be able to say goodbyes. That's a miracle. Because this was not somebody who was supposed to wake up or come to. Um, I've seen people grow in faith and find testimonies. I have seen people put aside vice and adopt virtue 
And these are things where we need to give thanks to God. But we need to have... This is one of those things where a discerning eye and a discerning spirit is so very important. And I was talking with a young man recently. Well, not a young man. Younger than me. But he was upset because the... He was in a dispute with with in-laws, with family, distant family. And there were some negative things said about him, and he was upset that these people had the weight of their local church behind him. Like, why wouldn't the bishop in their area not have the spirit of discernment with them, the power of discernment, and know what they're saying was false? And, and that's not... I mean, that might be a form of discernment, but that's not what I think of when I think of a judge in Israel having discernment. Because I don't think discernment is used to stop agency. I think people are going to be able to hang themselves when they lie to a judge in Israel. I think people are going to bless themselves when they're honest with the bishop and is with the judge in Israel. Um, I think it's up to the judge in Israel to use a discerning eye on how to work with people, on help to seek their healing so that people they're working with can be healed from hard feelings, from vice, from sin, that they might learn to forgive, that they might learn to move on. Uh, these are things I think that discernment is about and not so much necessarily with truth and falsity, although that can be involved. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Where, where am I wrong on that? Or what miracles have you seen? I do think when, we com when people complain that we don't see miracles, it's because they're looking for signs. And I don't think people will exercise the faith first. You have to exercise the faith before you see the miracle. There is... I believe that's a principle. Moses had to step into the Red Sea and have Israel behind him before the seas would part. So that's, that's the hard thing for people, I think. They think that things will be taken care of for them. And you need that combination of hard work and faith. And when you've done all you can do, that then the Lord will do more and make up the lack. Anyway, brothers and sisters, what do you think? Have you seen miracles? Has the Lord touched your life? Share. Let's build some faith. Let's add your testimonies to the voices of others. In the meantime, I hope you like this video. I hope you watch the next ones. I hope you'll come back for more. Like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. And let's build something here, a community of believers in faith. Thank you. Have a good night.